for joining another Conversations. I'm Candy Zenon, author and life coach and CEO founder of Change of Seasons Life Coaching. And I am here today with mentor, Miss Mary Doucette, mentor extraordinaire, the whole entire reason that Sage Platform exists because of this relationship well, right you. here. <laughs> It's true. We call this conversations because we're gleaning from the wit and the wisdom and the life experiences from those who have done it before us. And Miss Mary so graced me with her presence and um, allowed me to glean from, I say the saucer, not the cup, because you don't never want to take and bankrupt from somebody, but I glean from the overflow of her wisdom her life experiences, even her recipes. And she gave me a new recipe today. I'm gonna be making some pralines. So welcome to Conversations, Miss Mary. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I'm glad to be here. I'm so happy And to I here. feel honored that you would say you learned something from me. Oh, oh no doubt. And I and I know it's not the first time you've said no that, doubt. but I just live and spread it around. And you have graciously graciously and I love my mother and I love what she's taught me and I feel that she passed the baton and a teacher can only bring you as far as they've been and when it was time for me to go to next chapter next level to learn another phase of my life God sent in a teacher for that phase and I don't know if I told you but how this conversation went it all started with a prayer I had said Lord my house is chaotic. It's when I go to work, it's organized. But in the morning, we running around here, you know, looking for the shoes, start the car, get the shoe, wear the diaper bag, I can't find the keys. And by the time we all get in the car, we all frustrated and flustered and have to take a, a, a moment of meditation by the time we get to our school place or workplace. So I said, God, how do I organize my home? The very next day, two women were transferred to my department and Miss Mary walked to me. She never once gave me her name. She never once asked me my name. She walked to me with her signature hands and she said, hey, this is how I organize my day. And that began a two year mentorship. And we've been friends ever since. And so from that moment to the time that I left, and um, so it went from mentorship to friendship. Mm -hmm. And we, I, she just taught me everything from organizing my home, how to pay my bills, mm -hmm. when to go to the grocery store, and about a hundred ways to use baking soda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just went on a note. So who is Miss Mary? A mother I am I guess a teacher uh -huh. <laughs> I am just do I say I'm just me and whatever it is that someone can use that I have said to them or just said in general I feel honored that that Candy thinks that I've taught her some things because I didn't know half of what I was teaching her until I read a couple of things in her book and now I know that I have but mm -hmm. she's one of the girls let me say it at that time she's one of the girls that truly did want some advice mm -hmm. we have girls that don't want any advice you can't tell them anything I raised two sons they're grown and they have families but 
I'm a wife of 53 years to the same man. And I can't say that this has been good the whole time, but I made some decisions that I'm. this is who I am and I'm not going to change to be who you are. Right. And that not, was not just in the marriage, that was in everything I did. Mm -hmm. Unless it was something that I needed to learn mm -hmm. and do it their way, if I was doing it my way, and that was okay. That's the way I did it. You're just a, a renaissance woman because you were bold and courageous and feisty. Because coming from certain generations, that was unheard of, to be as courageous and bold and um, verbal, voicing your opinion, what you like, what you don't like, what you're going to accept, what you're not going to accept. Certain generations didn't accept that. Women were seen and not heard. That's exactly right. So you were changing the game. And that's how my mother was in that age group. They didn't say anything to someone, no matter what that other person was doing, even if it was something that they would have done it differently and it came out the same, they wouldn't say, let me show you how I do that. Mm -hmm. or, let me tell you... Uh, not to go to the grocery store every day mm -hmm. with the three girls. With the three girls. <laughs> and then you'd rush home. You you go to Walmart every and Walmart is just like a family reunion. You That's gotta right. talk and to chit everyone. chat and mm -hmm. then you gotta you end up picking up stuff that you didn't need. Mm -hmm. So she taught me about shopping off a list. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you get home you're rushing to cook, rushing to eat, rushing to bathe your children, say your prayers. No, you're not, you're not going to read nursing rhymes because there's no time. Mm -hmm. It's just time to get to bed, go to sleep, and start all over again. But choosing one day to go to the grocery store, I was able to eke out about three extra hours in my evening to spend that time with the girls, make paper bag crafts, and run around the house, hula hoop, hopscotch, and help with homework. So that was a blessing in itself. You never know what's in you that you can share. It doesn't matter how minor or minute you believe it is. Share what you know and allow that person to run it through their filter, whether they need, like my mom said, eat the fish and throw away the bones. Run it through their filter and see what, how they need it and how they apply it and how they tweak it to benefit their lives. I really believe that. So with that being said, Mm -hmm. What is the word or phrase that you live by? Now, I had to think about this one. Okay. But the phrase that I use to myself is, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to be someone else. Okay. I may want to do something the way that you do it because mm -hmm. it's better than mine. But I'm not trying to be like you. Okay. You know, I'm not trying to... Um, Let's see, I'm not trying to overdo me so I can do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just plain and simple, and I, I don't want to be any other way. I love it. You being you, I am who I, I am. I am who I am. I love that. Yes. And so when you said, um, is that coming from, like some people say, they trying to keep up with the Joneses, so that's not right. your thing. That's not my thing. <laughs> I may like something the Jones is doing, yeah. but it when I do it, it's different. Well, you know? I'm to the Joneses, so. <laughs> <laughs> Send your family. Yeah, like I already know what they're doing. But as far yeah. as having to go to the nail shop every week and get mm -hmm. little stones on my nails, no. Mm -hmm. To have to have a $300 uh, bag mm -hmm. to carry around, That's no. That's not your thing. I, you know, I fall in love with some things and I might... I might do it, but okay. it's not going to be some every week or mm -hmm. something. I love that. No apologies. That's mm -hmm. no apologies for who I am. Mm -hmm. So I would say this platform is built on learning things that we have to love through, learn mm -hmm. from, and live after it. Mm -hmm. And this is so that we don't get stuck in a rut. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we allow pain to paralyze us. Yes. And sometimes... You, and you, you probably ran into those people who have allowed 
betrayal, rejection, abandonment to harden their hearts mm -hmm. and they mean and they mm -hmm. honory and you can't get a word in edgewise. Mm -hmm. If you say good morning, they say, why do you think it's good? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean good morning? Uh -huh. And those people are hurt and they have built a memorial to their pain. So I want to teach on this platform how to love through it, learn from it, and live mm -hmm. after it with emphasis on live. Mm -hmm. What is the one thing that you felt that you lived through and you didn't get stuck? Oh, yes. What I know that I lived through that has benefited me and my family. Mm -hmm. My husband was in the Army when we got married. Okay. And right away we had a baby. Nice. Anyway, um, I he came home from Vietnam, a different person. Okay. And so we had, the family had to have counseling to live with it, to, okay. to get through it. And the thing that I learned from that is that I needed to learn his side of what was going on with him. Mm -hmm. And so we all went to counseling. And through counseling, I realized some things about myself that are uh, still with me today. I don't, I don't sail by myself. Okay. No matter who's around you, your children, or if you still have your parents that are doing things on their own, I realized that we all need help. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when post-traumatic stress disorder raised its head in my house and that the uh, VA said that the family needed counseling. Mm -hmm. We took advantage of that. That's beautiful. And that went for years with us, with my family, because as it evolved, some other guys were having PTSD, but in different, mm -hmm. it was coming out in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so they counseled with what they had coming from the veterans. Mm -hmm. And we learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I still stand on some of those things like let him be him mm -hmm. and then we're going to move from there. We're not going to try to make him do what I want mm -hmm. him to do. And so in that sense, he never demanded that I do what he wanted me to do. Okay. And we've been married 53 years, so some of that is working for us. Yeah, all of that's working. It cut down on a whole lot of uh, arguments. Mm -hmm. You know, I can say, I don't want to go with you to New Orleans this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm going with my girlfriends to Houston. Mm -hmm. And he'll say, oh, okay, mm -hmm. you need something? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You know, and I love the way he loves you. I love the way he <laughs> <laughs> he cares for you. He checks on you. How he's attentive towards you. He treats you like and fine he, china, and that's beautiful. He is attentive, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's good. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I have to say, "Okay, back off." <laughs> you know, you're giving <laughs> orders now. <laughs> <So nice. laughs> And I do say that to him, but I, I never get, even when I know that something is wrong with him, and it's usually something related back that we can relate back to those days, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say, um, okay, when you get that worked out, let me know. Mm -hmm. But don't just come up with an idea and expect me to jump in it, mm -hmm. you know, let me think about it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how I raised the children. I'd say, you all are going to do this, 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 and this. And let me know what you think. Okay. And I'm glad you're bringing up post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Because even on the heels of COVID-19, yes. a lot of people are going to be coming out with some anxiety, some paranoia, and some type of stress disorder mm -hmm. that took place out of maybe a financial term mm -hmm. that are even re-entering back into society mm -hmm. and what that looks like on mm -hmm. the heels of being quarantined. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yes, I do. And counseling is a way to go because mental hygiene is just as important 
as any other type of high That's hygiene. Exactly. And a lot of times we're not taught that counseling um, is as important. But talk it out. Like one lady told me, she said, you're crazy in your own head. You mm -hmm. have to talk it out to other people mm -hmm. because my perspective may just be that and I can't see beyond that. That's right. But if I have a, a biased party sitting as a mediator to listen to all points of view, they can help me see it a different way. Mm -hmm. They can help me learn to be flexible mm -hmm. in certain situations and learn compromise. Mm -hmm. Because um, people will have to learn how to even grocery shop differently. That's right. Maneuvering into this next season. That's right. And um, because they may have some uh, paranoia into, into society. But I would say don't let the fear overtake you. Right. Because, um, and, and there's a word for, is it arachophobia, when you don't want to leave the house no more? Yes. Yeah, so I felt that before. Yes. I felt that I felt that before closing in, not doing the COVID-19, I think partly living in a new city, I felt myself just kind of pondering on the thought of not venturing out to too many places. And then as I pondered, those options start getting smaller and smaller till I found myself just not wanting to stay home. Then I said, no, the devil is a liar. Great is he that is in me, that he that is in the world. And his angels that camp around me, he thickens his head of protection around me, and he keep us safe from all harm and danger. Right. Never let the fear be greater than the faith. I love it. Yes. And I'm saying that on the heels of when we start saying, oh, we don't want to leave the house question it question the, the that that conversation but as far as constantly we all need to talk it out we all need to get it out of our heads and onto the table and let somebody else give us another perspective and another viewpoint that will that's healthy and make our lives happier because sometimes we a person just talking to someone mm -hmm. and a professional could give us things that we never thought about and it could right. be just so simple. Yes. Like, okay, I never thought about it. That's that right. Way. And so, yes, I, I employ you to employ counselors to, yes. to talk it out with family and to overcome obstacles in your life that you don't have to just keep going through the exact same yes. thing over and over. Back to the same thing. Back to the right. same thing. Because you will never be yes. able to solve a problem on the same level of thinking. You have to go to... A different level of thinking yes. to solve the problem and I don't care how smart you are no tree eat up its own fruit right. so you may have wisdom in one area but what you have in trouble in, obviously the wisdom that you have is not gonna solve it so you need to eat from another tree another tree eat the fruit of another tree in order for your life to be more enriched and yes. nourished yes so what would you say you learned from that phase or that season? Well, I, I learned, and to use one of Candy's phrases, I learned to love through it. All right. I learned to love through post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh -huh. If he, uh, he came home with it, it was nothing that I had done to him that mm -hmm. had made him the way he was then. And at counseling, which was probably three or four years after he had been home. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that had reared its head were things that I watched and I didn't like, but I knew that I didn't want to move out mm -hmm. or anything like that. So all of our, the, the three of us, and do I say the four of us, all had counseling and we learned that we would learn or help each other through this. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that was spoken, it was something that was just done. Amen. The boys would come to me with something and say, uh, Mama, Daddy said, and we would talk about it. Now, if we decided it was not right for them to go that way, then we'd talk to Daddy about it. Okay. And so, I learned that, and I also learned that that was a, a real disorder. Mm -hmm. And when the VA sent me to counseling with the other women that was going through some of those things, 
I couldn't stay in their counseling because they were talking about their husbands lining guns up under the bed and Ooh. stuff that I hadn't experienced Ooh. and I didn't want to be in that group and begin to fear some of the things that they were going mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. and then make that up in my own mind. Yeah, so I good. went back and uh, told the person who had asked me to go to that counseling, I went back and said, I we're not at that level. I can't. I can't go to that group. That was smart. Well, yeah. You get what you need and uh -huh. no more. I, I, I learned I what I needed to know about it, and sometimes it was easy, and sometimes it was not. And you so, know? how would you say you live after it? I li I learned to be stronger mm -hmm. than I was coming into the marriage and being a mother and all of that. I learned that the way you do it, the way you do what you do, is not necessarily right or wrong. It is your way of doing it. Ooh, and if it good. was something that uh, you liked in someone else and, and you could do it and it was satisfying to you, then that's how you did it. We all learn, especially the women, we all learn from our mothers how mm -hmm. to do things. Mm -hmm. But then when we get out in the world and make friends, we learn that some of those things are done differently mm -hmm. in other cultures or other people's uh, homes. And you might like it. Yeah, you cultivate a life that, that suits you, and that's okay. And that goes back to I am who I who am. I am. <laughs> and that's it. And I'm not trying to be no, somebody you're else. Just being Mary yes, that's, that's right. Okay. That's right. I'm just that's being Mary okay. uh, My my favorite, my favorite. Um, that probably goes back to the the, the advice you gave me one day. Um, did you write it on a sticky note? You said you're doing everything well. And like you said, you know different things people do may do to benefit them mm -hmm. and um so i was just doing what i knew to do mm -hmm. once i knew more i was going to do more i was going to do that mm -hmm. but when you said you're doing everything well and you just don't know what healing those words brought to me and um because i had one child i had two in diapers just two different size diapers um, I had two in diapers. I had one in elementary when I met you. And um, I, uh, I was like, well, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But if she said I'm doing everything well, <laughs> I'm going to take that and run with it. Because um, just for somebody outside of you to recognize you, you know, doing your best, trying mm -hmm. to do your best. And so I wrote that on a sticky note to another young lady who had came to the church that we were attending. And I seen her, you know, attending church consistently. She was going to Bible study consistently. She was um, going to the different singles functions. And I was like, okay, I remember her when. Mm -hmm. And I said, look at her, you know, in mm -hmm. a new season of her life. And so I wrote a sticky note and I said, you're doing everything well. That's my Mary, that's my Miss Maryism. <laughs> And she came to me with tears in her eyes. She said, like I said, she didn't know. She said, I didn't know what I was doing. She said, but I knew that I wanted to be consistent with it. And I said, I notice your consistency, mm -hmm. and I celebrate you mm -hmm. forever. But I always use those words now because I know it awakens something in the person. Yeah, that's, that's and they say, you know, I'm seen and I'm heard, mm -hmm. and I am enough. Mm -hmm. I am enough. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and that's the place you have to get to. Is for myself, I am enough. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. I don't have to be out uh, buying new things just because somebody else. I don't have to change fashions because someone else mm -hmm. is. That I just do what I do. Right. I love mm -hmm. that. I, I live like that too because I feel my name is rare enough. Why? I have to go run out and put somebody right. else's name on the back. Yeah. So, with that being said, what is the one thing that you wish everybody knew 
that would just make their life just a little bit better. You see, maybe they're not doing it, or maybe that you don't see enough. Sorry, you don't see enough people doing it. Well, one of the things that I wish everybody could see and and should know is themselves. Mm -hmm. You need to know yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to know, uh, is this something I want to do or is this something I'm doing because she's doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big difference in you wanting to, to do certain things and the other one is that I'm copying what somebody else is doing mm -hmm. and it's not making me happy anyway mm -hmm. you I think you're happier when you're growing in yourself mm -hmm. and making your decisions based on you mm -hmm. and so uh, what do you want your life to be copying others is a habit that won't fit mm -hmm. it just some things other people do, they just won't fit. Right. So the, the one thing you need to do is learn who you are. And for me, I'm just me, and I'm going to do it the way I know how. Mm -hmm. Now, if I see it being done differently, and I like it, I may try it. Okay. You might like it, you or but you might not. It. That's true. Implement it in your life and, mm -hmm. you know, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like what you're saying, and I can sum up your entire conversation with the saying, I don't know who, who this quote is by, but to thine own self be true. That's it. Be true to your own self. Mm -hmm. Don't try to mimic what somebody else is doing in their life. It may not fit you. Mm -hmm. It may not be the thing that's going to make you happy. Right. And so if it doesn't make you happy, then you're going to be looking for something else to make you happy. Right. So, but if you learn yourself, and uh, I don't like this job. Uh, I have a friend who left town and with three little youngsters and just moved back home because she didn't like her life the way it was. Mm -hmm. And that friend of mine has blossomed to someone that I never thought about being. You know, I'm reading her second book now, and I'm having to go to the dictionary some. <laughs> so, you know, and she's being herself. Mm -hmm. She, she, You are being yourself, Thank and you. I can see it. Thank you. You know, and she, I don't know. I just wish that you were there years ago and, you know. But I think, I think we're all doing okay. Mm -hmm. You and I are. Yeah. She is. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we're we doing okay. And if we see something different that we want to try, mm -hmm. we can do that. And that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. We have permission. We give ourselves permission mm -hmm. to just try it. Mm -hmm. Just try it. Well, you all heard it here first from yes. my mentor, my Miss Mary, <laughs> to thine own self be true. Right. And, like, I want to do just what Miss Mary say, just be true to myself. And my life passion is to serve the heart of God by encouraging the hearts of his people. Yes. And I just want to offer a word of hope. And I do that through books, mentorship, one-on-one -on -one coaching, live events. And my newest tool of offering a word of encouragement is through this book, Hope for a Rainy Day. And you can get your copy on my website at candyzenon.com. And I want your heart to be encouraged. And remember, love through it, learn from it, and live after it. Thank you so much, Miss Mary. Thank you. <laughs>
I feel honored that you would ask me to do this. Yes, no doubt. No doubt the original reason why Sage even exists well, is based on this. And us. so I just do what she asked me because I trust her. Mm -hmm. I didn't it's, know she was coming with equipment. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs>